Thanks, everybody, for joining us at checkyourgame.com. I've got a new friend of mine, Mike Littler, and I didn't get his, I couldn't get his last name right. I'm like, Littler? I'm like, come on, Gary, you got to get this straight. But listen, Mike is a good guy. I'm excited, Mike, that we have you here with us to share your story, and I know a little bit about you. And I always tell people I'm so excited, and I am, again, so excited to have you because you are a part of the faith community. And so to be able to share a story and to be able to brag about God is so important. And so I'm just encouraged. I'm thankful that you're here, Mike, and uh, just welcome. Well, thank you for having me, Gary. I love the work that you do and check your game and the testimonials are always so encouraging and inspiring. So I appreciate the opportunity to, to share a little bit. Yeah, well, thank you, Mike. And, um, you know, let's just get right to it. You know, mm -hmm. you shared a little bit about your story. It's a little bit of a faith story and how business kind of got in the mix. Why don't you share a little bit? And if you need to um, share what happened before, as far as where mm -hmm. you were before you accepted Jesus, sure, we, you've got some time for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, so um, a testimony that always kind of a uh, personal testimony that always kind of sticks with me and uh, I relate back to uh, quite often was a period of time after I uh, was actually saved. I was saved in, um, in April of 2007, right around Easter time um, and uh, grew up in the church. Um, you know, my parents were, were, um, were very good about uh, exposing me to Christ, but I had over the course of time, uh, from the time I was young to my mid thirties, uh, walked away from Christ. I was living a very, very worldly life. I think I um, was what you might call a cultural Christian, where I was like, uh, <laughs> you know, trying to, uh, uh, you know, trying to uh, claim Christianity, but really not following God or obedient to God. And um, <clears throat> um, very, uh, very uh, unique story, but maybe not so unique, I guess, but uh, unique to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I actually uh, had come out of a relationship that was a bad relationship and was really qu questioning my lifestyle um, and kind of my life and where I was headed and the peace of mind I had and uh, all these type of things. Um, and was in the process of um, uh, dog sitting actually for my parents. And when I was dog sitting, I received a invitation to an Easter service at a local church in, Cal in Southern California where I live. Um, and God kind of put it on my heart. I was like, I think I should go. I, <laughs> I think uh, I'm being called to go. And, um, and so I decided to go, uh, went to Easter service and was um, um, over the course of time, uh, just was uh, continuing to really be interested in the things of God um, and uh, just uh, really encouraged and inspired and convicted of my lifestyle. Um, through that church, over the course of time, um, I, I decided to go meet with a pastor and kind of uh, talk about talk about Christ and my lifestyle and was led to Christ by a pastor going through the Romans road, which was mm -hmm. Um, very convicting to me because I was kind of living a lifestyle where I thought I had it all together and just the conviction of, you know, you know, the, the principles that, you know, no one seeks God. We've, we've all fallen short, short of his glory really stuck to me because I was trying to live for my own glory at the time, mm -hmm. but I uh, was very blessed to be saved through, uh, through, uh, through Christ using that church. Um, and around that time, it was interesting. I met my um, a girlfriend that's since become my wife, um, who was a, already a believer. And I, looking back, I think God was actually preparing me in my heart to to follow Him before I met her. Um, and just a godly woman, fun woman, really a different relationship than I'd ever had. Uh, just very peaceful, enjoyable. Um, um, and, um, at the same time, I was actually uh, working for an office supply company, um, in Southern California. And as my wife and I got, uh, my uh, girlfriend, now my wife got closer and closer and realized that this might be something that's, that God wants for us marriage. Um, I received a job offer in Colorado for a director position. Um, and I was still, you know, as we, as we always do, I still, uh, work, working through my flesh. And when I saw the director position, I was like, oh my goodness, this is something I really want. It's a title. It's something that'll, you know, kind of give me, uh, you know, give me purpose and meaning and, you know, business success and all these type of things. And so, um, as that job offer kind of, um, expanded, I learned more and more about it in my mind, I was thinking, you know, I'm going to take this job and I'll be able to make the relationship work. I was justifying 
I didn't know if that was true or not, but at the time I wanted the job more than I wanted anything else in my life. And I remember going golfing at a uh, church event um, uh, with a bunch of pastors and I was sharing my story, sharing what was going on with them. And to a man, every one of them said, are you basically, are you crazy? You know, you have a godly woman, you know, you're chasing the things of this world. Um, you know, who knows if you'll be able to maintain the relationship. And I was kind of giving them the Heisman a little bit saying, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying, but I'll make it, I'll make it work. And it got to the point where I received a verbal job offer one night um, from the person that was going to be my boss. I talked to my girlfriend and my wife about it. And we just kind of let uh, put the, all the cards on the table. And she was like, you know, I don't want to, um, I don't want to get in your way on this, but I think there's, we have something good. We should really pray and pray and pray about it, which we did. The next, uh, literally the next morning, uh, I received a call saying not only was that position removed, but um, my actual job at the organization had been removed as well, the role that I was in. And I was, uh, you know, upset and, and sad and all these type of things because I was, you know, had my heart set on it. But it was so interesting looking back because I really believe that if uh, they, they God intervened in a, you know, in a, in a very uh, a showmanship way, in a very real way, and I know sometimes we can look back and see things where God's moved in our lives and we're very thankful, but this was something where he was really showing off saying, this is something I do not want for you. The relationship with your girlfriend is something I do want for you. This is a godly woman. You've lived your whole life kind of pursuing the things of this world. I'm going to remove it. And he totally removed it. And it didn't make any sense, Gary, because I had received the verbal job offer the night before. But, uh, you know, over the course of the last, goodness, about 15 years, um, I am so blessed for what God did in my life because it allowed me to marry a, a godly woman, which has helped with um, our mutual sanctification, getting to know the Lord, really trusting the things of God and also, another thing that I look back on that I didn't think about um, previously was those men of God, those pastors that had, had that had really counseled me um, about you know what's important in life, which is a relationship with a godly woman and your relationship with Christ, and putting things in order. I guess the job's important, but it has a place. You know, just being able to be very thankful and looking back at people that had my best interest in Christ in mind and always trying to remember that when I'm dealing with, you know, brothers and sisters uh, and when I'm counseling people based on my experience, um, because the easy answer for them would, would have been to kind of blow it off and say, well, do what, you know, do what God puts on your heart. But they actually counseled me that this was something that was important and that's always stuck with me too. But, um, you know, fast forward, it's a, it's a difficult life like it is for everybody. And, you know, I, I struggle with the things of the flesh and the work stuff, uh, as well. And trying to give that control as we talked earlier to God, um, you know, as best I can, but, um, that was just a testimony of mine that I hope encourages others to, you know, really trust in the work that God has for you and the things that we sometimes want, um, you know, aren't necessarily best for us. And um, just to surround yourselves with uh, good people of, uh, of faith and trust in the things of God and knowing that, you know, he has the best for us. And I'm always encouraged by Romans 8, 28, you know, uh, you know, about, you know, and all good and all things God works for the good of those who love him. And, and that I feel is my job is to love Christ, realizing that while we'll go through up and downs, ups and downs in this world, um, you know, um, he'll make things good in the end, even though it might be a little bit painful for us. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking um, about your story. Well, the one thing was that you and your then girlfriend, you prayed about it, you heard advice, you were given the Heisman, right. but you yeah. still made a decision to pray. And whether you were totally serious sure. or somewhat yeah. going through the motions, God heard it and he he came through and he's like, I've got something better for you. You don't understand sure. um, that title, that shiny, everything's shiny around the world, right? <laughs> Everywhere yeah. we look, we see something shiny and that uh, we go after that. God's like, I got something better. It's going to be, it's going to help you shine on the inside. And it's this relationship. So yeah. I love that. I have a quick question for you. Just hearing sure. that. Um, so you became a Christian or I think, you were talking about becoming a Christian. You said you were kind of got off on your ways. And, you know, and that, you know, I, I get that. Cause like, sure. 
I was off on my ways for nine <laughs> years. And so my brain is like stirring with like, oh yeah, but I don't want to know specifically sure. anything like that. But I wanted to ask, was there something that took place for you to say, man, this path is not cutting it? Yeah. Yeah, it was, you know, I think it was mostly the series of relationships I, w- I was in. And um, oftentimes the women that I was looking for, um, uh, just coming to a re- realization after the last relationship before I met my wife that um, it was it was kind of the same things I was chasing in the in the in the business world I was chasing with women and in relationships was things that could be satisfying to me that could build me up personally um, that might not be not be the most articulate way of putting it but it was really re- the relationships I had were not. Um, um, were not fulfilling relationships for me and probably for the people that were on the other end of me as well. And um, just that the, the, uh, the way I was approaching life wasn't working because I always wanted to be married. I always wanted to have relationship, uh, you know, great relationship, friendships, all these type of things. But the path that I was taking, which was a very self-absorbed me first path, wasn't really working. And I realized that, um, uh, that this was a constant theme in my life. It was a, a constant theme. And when my current wife came into my life, it felt different. It looked different. It was, um, it, it just was different. So that might be very inarticulate, but I would say the relationships, the success of my relationships really um, wasn't, wasn't what I was, maybe it was, was what I was looking for, but it wasn't uh, uh, fulfilling to me. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It, it sounds yeah. as if you're the, you know, the job, you're looking for something shiny with the job and almost with the relationship, we can go after the shiny things of a relationship. Yeah. that aren't that aren't any kind of foundational um biblical you know it's all more a short term a temporary you know what's in it for me not what right. not the godly way not what god wants us to do but i get that and um yeah. i just i just wanted to ask because i know when everybody when i ask people to share their check your game story I ask people to share about when they check their game when they examine yeah. their game of life and usually there's some sort of like loss or some kind of adversity or whatever. Yeah. And I just was asking because I know we never really want to do um, something better or improve or change unless something just throws us off. And it sounds like with that last relationship, it just seems like relationship after relationship after relationship, you're yeah. just like, was not, it was not fulfilling. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. And, um, and it was also, it's funny when you were talking there, Gary, it was, it was not fulfilling. And I realized kind of looking back the way I kind of approached the world, it was, uh, I was trying to, uh, it was very using on my part in a lot of ways, so it couldn't be fulfilling. So I was uh, trying to build relationships and friendships that could build me up in my confidence and in my insecurities yeah. and all that type of stuff. But yeah, I think that last one, uh, the, the last relationship was just, okay. I, I see it now. The way I'm living in my life is is not working. I'm not happy. I'm not peaceful. I'm not, yeah. um, you know, all these type of things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what, Mike? Thank you so much. Um, as far as advice, I know you shared, and let me let me write let me share what you shared on your written sure. thing, and you can just repeat it. You say, pursue the things of God with your faith, family, relationships. And then in business and in that order is how do you, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I think um, uh, that's a, that's a actually interesting. You mentioned that because I think that gets back to the testimony too. It's, it's prioritizing the important things. Um, and uh, for me, it's, it's God first. It's uh, my wife. Uh, we don't have kids, but uh, she's my family and my extended family and then work and really trying to kind of, I guess to use your um, own business name, Gary, check your game as to where, where you are with that. Because um, my personal biggest struggle is, and maybe as a guy, this is common is work. You know, I say the thing I say, I'm putting these things first, but work is what really grabs my attention. Um, and so I think prioritizing and uh, really working to, to check yourself um, is, you know, as you say, and to say, where am I God? Um, are the priorities that you want, the ones that I'm focusing on as, and as best as possible, um, you know, live life that way. And then, you know, give the outcomes as we talked earlier, give the outcomes as best we can to God. It's like, it's not under control. We just have to be faithful. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much. And Mike, if anybody wanted to get a hold of you, if they're watching or if they're listening to a podcast, they sure. obviously don't see your business card. And if you choose yep. to put a business card on the bottom of your profile, they sure. can see that. But for those who are listening, um, how could somebody get a hold of you? Yeah, you could reach out to me. Um, I work uh, in an organization called Reaching Souls Organ uh, International. So my email is michael at reachingsouls.org. Um, I also have a personal email if you prefer that, which is uh, UCLA, uh, like the school, and then littler, L-I-T-T-L-E-R at gmail.com. But I would be happy to uh, touch bases and, and talk to anybody that, you know, that we can mutually encourage. Yeah. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining in. And Mike, thank you so much for sharing your testimony and just a little bit about your life. I'm encouraged. And I know others will be encouraged as well. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it.